Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a new episode of Film Metal Fukumi Otaku News. So just like always, I'm going to start with some quick self peer to talk about the coffee where I'm publishing articles on blogging and I'm most notably translating live streams of stuff I like. For example, Heaven Burns Red, I just did a summary of the latest live stream. So if you're playing the game in Japanese or if you're looking forward to the English version by your star, you can check it out because there's no spoilers. And I'm also streaming on Twitch and on YouTube. So I really appreciate it if you can subscribe and follow me over there as well. Thanks. So Kadokawa has started publishing some commercials for the Fimental Panic Family special movie thing that I talked about in a previous video. So just showing some small introductions for the characters. They did an introduction for Sosuke, the protagonist of the original series, and of Nami, one of his kids. So let's watch these trailers. <laughs> so yeah, and the second volume is going to release on November 20th. And he's a really funny trader because he's basically saying one of the lines that Kaname used to tell him all the time, like, don't shoot stuff, don't ex make stuff explode, don't booby strap stuff, like she always used to tell him, tell him that. And that's what, he's, that's what he's saying, like, he's saying, I, I shouldn't teach my kids that kind of stuff. And then at the end, he's like, yeah, go, go pick up the weapons, they're, they're in the closet. So yeah, it's a, it's a really, really iconic uh, really really feel metal panic like thing so and you have this second trailer with the daughter nami sagara nami desu shotogan nado wa hito tori no kaki wa atsukaimasu sonna ni otou san to niteru to wa omoanai kedo otou san itsu mo no carbine to grenade de ii no ne fantasia bunko full metal panic family and here she's like, yeah, uh, in my opinion, I'm not, I'm not really similar to my father, but she's like, just like him, she can use tons of weapons and stuff. And she's like, at the end, hey, hey, dad, is it okay if I just pick up the same carbine as well? And the same grenades. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, that kind of family. So it's really funny. And um, like, they still didn't say when the special movie is actually going to be out, but like, I'll be sure to tell you if I can make uh, another video by the time it releases. So I guess the next video will probably be Kaname and then uh, their and then their their son, right? So yeah, just a very quick news talk about this. So. Nintendo and Monolith has announced a remaster for Xenoblade Cross, so the game finally won't be stuck on the Wii U. And like this is as expected, like everyone knew this will happen one day, but I think most people, myself included, we were surprised that this is happening now because we thought they would wait for like the Switch 2. But I guess like uh, as many people have said, and that's what I think as well, like it's very possible they are actually going to make some kind of some kind of enhanced version for the Switch too. So there's going to be like like a base version of the remaster and like an enhanced version that will run on Switch too. I guess like, in my opinion, it's something very possible, especially because this is going to release like the, by the time this releases, like the, they might release the next console soon after that in my opinion so yeah and so just like the first xenoblade remaster they completely remade the 3d 3d models and the characters look very different now and everyone is saying that the characters look much better like objectively i guess you can say they look better but personally i like the original design in the game more and like the like the original design in the game they definitely look weird but that's part of the charm in my opinion, like Lin and Elma, they, they look more more in the original game than in here. Like in here, like it's too, like it's too traditional, uh, standardized, like it's too, like modernized, I don't, I don't like this word, but like it's very, it's exactly what they did with the Xenoblade, uh, first Xenoblade remaster. They kinda removed the originality of the original character design and the character designer and they just made it like more acceptable for 
people nowadays, but in my opinion, like the, the original, even if she looks uncanny, lean, she looks very uncanny in the original Wii U game. I think she looks more, much more moe in the original game and much more interesting and, mo and cuter. And one thing I wanted to say is this is something my favorite French streamer, like the sole French streamer I, I watched made me notice, is how they kind of removed the, the, the designs by the original character designer uh, Tanaka Kunihiko with uh, the original character designer for one of the original character designers for Zeno Gears and the first Zeno Saga game and then he came back for Xenoblade Cross and so he's a character designer for Xenoblade Cross and like in my opinion they kind of removed his style like if you look at the original game the way Elma looks in the original game she she looks much closer to his style and his style is very simple but he's one of the old illustrations Tanaka Kunihiko did and like his style is very simple moe but like you can tell the faces they are very distinctive like shapes especially when it comes to the mouth and like if you look at some of his iconic uh, illustrations like uh, I think it was here like the the portrait in the in Zeno Gears like like Ellie's face on the portrait like she has a very like distinctive like jawline and face like and this is kind of the, the stuff that uh, that was also present with the 3d models on on xenoblade cross but like the remaster now they completely re removed that that aspect and personally i don't really like it but I'm sure like the vast majority of people they will say that the remasters, the characters in the remaster look better. But personally, I like the uncanny feel of the, the weird uncanny feel. I think this is better. And I think it's more, air, especially for, for, the, for the female characters. It's cuter in my opinion. But anyway, so yeah, and Tanaka Kunihiko is a very popular artist. He's one of, he's one of my favorite artists. He also did the character design for Pop Full Mail by Falcom. He also did the, the character design in... Uh, Rin Explorers, Fam and Eri, like this manga. This is a, a old manga by Hobby Japan, a really cool fantasy series, very similar to Slayers and this kind of stuff. And yeah, so Kuniho, Tanaka Kunihiko, like I really like his designs. So I think, in my opinion, it's kind of a shame that they kind of nerfed, they kind of nerfed the design with this, with this change. And another very important thing for the Xenoblade Cross remaster, Nintendo has confirmed that the game, the remaster, will be based on the American version of the Wii U game. So sadly, this means that the stuff that was censored in the American version of the game will still be censored in the remaster. And so this means some missing, if I, if I remember correctly, there's most notably some missing outfits, so maybe and there's a breast slider, the chest slider customization in the character creation that was removed as well. And the translation of the game, in my opinion, is, is kind of weird as well because like there's a lot of stuff censored for stuff it's like a it's like a 90s translation like uh, all the all the all the references to religion etc were removed like there's a faction that's called testament they renamed it they renamed a lot of stuff etc so sadly i guess they will reuse reuse the same translation and not retranslate the game that would have been really great if they actually retranslated retranslated the game to to remove the censorship and stuff and uh, to re to put back the re religious references back in because like uh, a xeno game without the religious references is kind of weird but sadly yeah they confirmed this is going to be based on the american version of the game and not the original japanese version so you should keep this you should keep this in mind as well so there's a translator called Mode. They suddenly re released a fan English patch translation for Galzu Island. And this is an eroge, a beboge that Ali Soft released in 20th in 2005. And like this is one of the games like I would hear about on anime blogs back when I started reading anime blogs in the late 2000s. Back when I started hearing about the uh, Sengoku Ren, so like everyone was saying this is the best game of all time, it's the best game ever, and like everyone like everyone was, who was playing it was saying, wow, this is so incredible, this is better than everything I've played like recently, etc. So yeah, so this is one of the, like I guess, relatively pretty popular early soft games, and like it released like so almost 20 years ago. Um, so yeah, mode 
uh, suddenly dropped a, a, a full translation in English of the game. So you should definitely go on Twitter and, and thank them for their for their hard work because they they've been working on this for like months and months apparently and may, on, mainly only doing this. So yeah, and they quickly explained uh, Galzu Island is an hentai game, an Ali soft game, so running for well everything that comes with that territory. It is also the most fun dungeon RPG I've ever played and the humor makes me smile and the girls are cute and Leo is cute. So, <laughs> so they're saying yeah this is really difficult to translate. Like uh, seriously I don't think I can ever ever do anything of this length again without pay. It's taken so much of my free time. I don't think I've had other hobbies since like the beginning of August, but the comedy is so snappy and the girls have so much so much personality. So yeah, I can definitely understand that feel and this, <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I'm studying so many articles and I'm never finishing them because I, I want to find some real work. <laughs> but yeah, so Girls Who I Don't Like, it's a... Uh, like I think, yeah, I was saying I, f I first heard about it like maybe 15, over 15 years ago and I've heard that it's a really pretty good game so yeah, if you don't like, if you like, like if you don't have any resistance toward this kind of content, like you should check it out. As, you know, there's a Google Drive with the instructions to all how to install the patch and everything. And most, of, most, of, most importantly, be sure to say thanks to to Mod for for the translation. So yeah, just a very quick news to mention this. Like it was really shocked. Like all my online friends, all, everyone was shocked that that a translation was suddenly released like this out of nowhere. So this is a really cool thing. So another quick news to talk about my favorite series of the last decade and the current decade, Pretty Rhythm and its direct sequel, King of Rhythm. So they announced they're doing a virtual live this so, uh, November and December. And the, they announced this a few weeks ago, but I didn't have the time to talk about it in a video. And now the tickets are on sale. So a virtual live is a live like you can, it's going to be streamed. So you can just watch it. You need to buy tickets and then you can watch it online. And virtual lives, they only showcase the characters with 3D models. So the CU, they don't show up. So it's just the characters and the CU, they pre-recorded pre everything and then they play out the, the streaming and the live. And so yeah, there's going to be multiple events. Uh, there's going to be three days, like there's the dates. The first one is on November 30 and with, with Shin and Kakeru presenting emceeing and then you have another one on uh, on uh, i think the second one where is the second one so yeah so there's going to be multiple days and you can buy tickets for multiple days and then there's going to be a final a final event on uh where was it uh there's going to be a final event like in for christmas in december 24 this will be the dates linked listed somewhere, but I can't find it. I just saw it just now, but I can't find it anymore. But like on on December twenty fourth, there's going to be a final event, and in my opinion, uh, these these are the dates. Okay, so yeah, so you you've got November thirtieth with with Shin and Kakeru, and then you've got December seventh with Taiga, uh, Leo, and you, and then you've got December fourteenth with Yukisama and Minato, and then there's going to be a final big event on December twenty first with all the characters, I assume, and um, I assume this is this final date is probably probably when they're going to announce something and hopefully they're going to announce uh, a real real sequel because like the latest movie that released a few months ago in Japan uh, King of Prism Dramatic Prism one it's a new movie but it's mainly a recap of uh, shiny seven stars but with some new scenes and with some new new stuff a lot a lot a lot of new stuff I didn't spoil myself much but I know there's a lot of new stuff and most notably the, the seiyu and director Hishida Masakazu has been teasing that they're doing something in more so hopefully this something they will announce it at the Edel Rose Christmas party on December 20, uh, 21st and I actually I think I already say this multiple times but uh, while I'll watch um, after I watch King of Prism Pride the Hero in uh, 2018 or so I still haven't watched Shiny Seven Stars so I really need to watch Shiny Seven Stars so then if they do some kind of 
uh, announcement with some announcement trailer. I won't be spoiled, spoiled too much. But yeah, uh, sadly, Dramatic Prism 1 is only in theaters for now, so I gotta watch, I gotta wait for the disc release. And yeah, I, I need to watch uh, Shiny Prism, Sh Shiny Seven Stars. I still haven't watched it. So yeah, just a quick news to talk about this. Like, I think there's a few fellow Prism elites or Prism, Prism Yakuza who are watching my videos. Uh, just wanted to give you a heads up that the tickets are on sale and yeah sadly it's kind of region locked so it depends like this they're, they're saying it's a worldwide uh, concert but like it's region locked so it depends sadly in france like i can't buy tickets but like you should check out this page and check out if you can buy it from the states from the usa and from other countries it depends i guess but yeah in france i can't buy the tickets and one last thing is this isn't the first time pretty series is doing this kind of vr concerts most notably, there was one for for Kirato Pudichan a few like one year ago or something, and it was really interesting because it was a concert, but it had story elements written by the show's director, and they even introduced a brand new character, and it was a sequel with the characters of Kirato Pudichan being in high school, so it was a real sequel concert with some story elements. So yeah, so this is very similar to. To this so this is going to be concert but with some story not not some real some real story parts this time but some talking with the characters and stuff so yeah just wanted to quickly bring this up so now for some very funny announcements so the official twitter for gundam seed freedom the movie of the the, the gundam seed uh, series has announced they're making something called gundam seed freedom zero <laughs> I almost burst out laughing when I first saw the announcement. So they're saying that because, you know, the movie is taking place two years after Gundam Seed Destiny. Gundam Seed Freedom is taking place two years after Gundam Seed Destiny. So they said Gundam Seed Freedom Zero is going to be some kind of prequel. So I assume this is going to take place and cover the two years gap. And this is very funny because in the if you went to the Japanese theaters to see to watch Gundam Seed Freedom, one of the in the first week back when the game back when the movie release in theaters, uh, one of the bonuses you would get when going to the theater was a special novel, and this special novel they were taking place before the movie. So I'm wondering if this is going to be some kind of adaptation of these novels with some. Uh, with some extend some extended elements or if this is going to be something completely different or something so for now they didn't say if this is going to be another movie or a tv series or an ova or like they didn't say anything they just say they're making a project called uh, gundam seed kido senshi gundam seed freedom zero and that it's a prequel to the seed freedom movie and uh, one thing a lot of fans have been talking about is how the, it's possible Gundam Seed Freedom Zero will talk about the freedom incident. This is something that they talk about in the movie, but they don't explain what it is. So maybe this, this will explain what it is. Uh, yeah, there's the freedom, like it's like they, they are hinting that the freedom was stolen or something at some point between Gundam Seed Destiny and Gundam Seed Freedom, like they don't explain it. And maybe this is something, that, because I didn't read the, the novels, the prequel novels, so maybe it's something that they explain a little bit in the prequel novel or something. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fans on, on Twitter, uh, Japanese fans on Twitter were saying maybe this will expand on the freedom and incident. So yeah, we don't know for now. And personally, I actually liked the movie a lot because uh, I actually early in early 2024 I rewatched Gundam Seed, the original Gundam Seed, uh, with the remaster version, and I liked it a lot. Uh, I think it's actually a masterpiece. Like a lot of people, they are very they are too harsh on the series. I think it's really good, and even myself, like back back and back when I watched it uh, in Iriatai, I watched it in real time, like back when it was airing in in uh, 2001 2002 with fan subs and this was, this was pretty much like the one of the first series with my siblings we watched it with fan subs while it was airing in japan and i really liked it but right after this we watched the original gundam series and zeta and tabu de zeta and shas contract etc so we realized that Gundam Seed was kind of a remake, but worse than the original. And then Gundam Seed Freedom, uh, Gundam Seed Destiny started, and like the first 
50, 15 episodes or so are good, but then the, the story gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And I still think today that Gundam Seed Destiny is one of the worst anime series I've ever seen. But, but honestly, the original Gundam Seed, I think it's, it's really, really, really good. And this rewatch I, I did in early, earlier this year confirmed that, in my opinion, it's really, really good. So, yeah, and so... I had, but after Gundam Seed Destiny, I had some very low expectation for the movie, but my expectation was very shattered. I think the movie is really good. Like, it's not perfect either, because uh, back when the movie released, I was seeing a lot of Japanese fans saying that this it's a masterpiece, etc. But, like, it's not that good, but I still think the movie is really, really good. I actually really like the movie. I had this chance to watch it because there was a like for just two days they they aired the movie in cinemas in france in april or may or something so i could watch it with my with my sister of my and my mother and it was really really a really really good movie in my opinion and um, i still need to actually write my my impressions of the movie because i want to try to make um a Japanese video where I'm talking about my impressions on the movie and then an English article. But yeah, personally, I actually really like the movie. So maybe Freedom Zero will actually be good. But this is very funny because I was talking with us siblings and I was saying, yeah, we were talking about how like Gundam Seed, Freed, Gundam Seed is done. That, that with, this, with the movie, they finally made the movie 20 years later. Like he's done. Like there, there, there won't be a sequel, right? And now instead of a sequel, they're just making a prequel. So they, they keep, they're, they're going to keep milking it forever. So yeah. Like I, I'm, I will keep my expectation low so I don't get disappointed. But this is, this is just a really, really funny. <laughs> this is just so funny. Anyway. So the final news today is how Koei Tecmo later this week they announced like after the after Monday they announced uh, Honoka is in Venice Vacation Prison. Usually they wait on Mondays to reveal the, the last character, but this week they say that the final character and more information will be revealed this Friday on November first. So yeah, and they ended up revealing Nanami is in the game and they revealed a release date. So the game will be released on March six on. 2025 March 6 on PlayStation, Steam, and DMM games. And there's several things to say. First off, they publish a full trailer. So let's watch the full the full length trailer. <laughs> せっかくだからオーナーのことをもっと教えてよ。ね。いいでしょ。ずっとずっとお伝えしておりました。オーナー様、オーナーさん、この島本当に素敵な島ですね。これからは直接指導を行います。よろしく。じゃあ、2人っ
doing and Aikido practitioner, you have Misaki who is like a manager and taking care of the Highland Review. And Nanami, she's just a regular random girl and she's just like a classmate, a university classmate of Misaki and she wanted to meet Misaki so she she joined the island but she, she doesn't have any special talents or any superpowers or anything because one of the things, one of the reasons why I always liked the Dead of Alive series as a kid is how it's mixing a lot of stuff so for for example you have the ninja stuff you have the you have the kunoichi duo with ayani and kasumi you have hayapusa from ninja gaiden you have hayate etc then you also have the sci-fi stuff and the technology stuff with helena and deoa tech and the clones and like all the sci-fi stuff in the series and then you also have supernatural elements with tengu and later on Nyo tengu and the oni girl kanna in, uh, in the gacha game but nanami she's just like a regular person so just what's funny about it so that's she's supposed to be boring just like the other characters but that's that's because she's boring i actually like her because she's not anything like she's not anything in particular she has no superpower she has no special abilities she has no like she's not a genius or anything and let's do the usual comparison i booted up the gacha game so this is how nanami looks like in the it looks like in the gacha game so she looks strikingly different right but she she looks different but she still looks cute so i don't really mind the difference and so yeah like you can see like she looks completely different in the in the gacha game compared to the compared to the to the to the venus vacation prism so this is kind of crazy in a way like the change in engine is is really makes the character looks very different but she still looks cute so I, i'm not particularly like I, i'm okay with this so yeah, and so they reveal a lot of stuff. We should check out the official site with the, all the new information they revealed. So, yeah, first off, the release date's March 6th. And then they revealed some profiles for all the characters. And um, let me put the, the site in English. So these profiles, they're the same profiles as in the gacha game. So this is not new information like the, this is the same measurements, the same the same bio, the same the same profiles as in the, the gacha game. So there's nothing new here. So yeah, you have Misaki and then Fiona and then uh, Elise, uh, Tamaki and Honoka and Nanami. So they published a short story, a st story gig as well. And basically the story is that apparently there's going to be some kind of meteor shower at the island. And like if you spend the meteor shower, shower with, with your special someone, something good will happen. And like this is like a, a very typical like summer story, summer love story you often find in Japanese media. And this is like the, I don't know if you're familiar with Tokimeki Memorial, with Tokimemo, the legend of Tokimemo of the legendary tree. If you confess your love in front of the legendary tree, your love will be eternal. Like all this kind of stuff is the same stuff. And uh, so, yeah, so the story is very light. So, obviously, the game will be centered around the characters and developing these characters because, except for Honoka, like they're all brand new characters made for the gacha game and they're all the like i already explained in my previous video but all the characters in the gacha game they are very limited like lore like people cool kids say these days say these days they are very limited lore very limited story development so this game is going to try to finally give them some real story elements and some real personality and some real developments so yeah so the game story focus on these six characters and they explain a lot of stuff that they already explained on the reveal stream at Tokyo Game Show 2024. So first off, the game, you have some choices. Let's switch to the English version of the site. So first off, the, the game, you have some a choice system. So whenever you're spending time with a girl, there's some multiple choices. And depending on the choices, you have app, you'll, you'll end up getting different endings. So one thing, be it in the Japanese or in the English, version they don't specify if they mean that there's going to be one ending for each girl or if they mean that for each girl you have different endings for each girl and for example you have like a true end for each girl you have a normal end a bad end several bad ends or something like they didn't specify they just say it's multiple endings so i'm very curious about this because hopefully hopefully there's a lot of endings and you can see some pretty 
some pretty bad scenarios and some some bad endings and stuff that stuff of so just some stuff like this and uh, some true ending and some normal ending etc and this is another thing they specified back at Tokyo Game Show so you'll be able to take photos at any time and regarding this like they explained in an interview that the reason why you will be able to take photos like this is thanks to the game engine and basically in an interview they explained that the the game is running on the katana engine and the katana engine is the the engine that koei tecmo is basically using for all their kids all their games recently i think dead or alive 6 was running on this like uh wulong fallen dynasty was running on this uh, i think neo 2 maybe or something like this is a basically this is a user only engine they're using for for years for many games and that's why it's different from the gacha game because the gacha game is using the soft engine i think it was called this way so it's a different engine so they come from it's a different engine so yeah the character will ultimately uh, will ultimately look different and so yeah so there's a lot of stuff first off they confirmed it's going to be a physical version of the game so this is pretty cool and there's going to be a lot of uh, a limited version it's going to be our first limited version a premium box which is the game plus um, the game plus uh, uh, a photo book like they say this is just a photo book with some some special photos and with some a asmr and uh, an asmr episode of misaki so if you are a misaki fan and uh, if misaki is your favorite i guess you should get this if you're rich <laughs> uh, and yeah so they confirmed this and then there's going to be an even bigger limited edition with this time all the stuff from the previous edition the misaki asmr stuff plus uh a special mat, a desktop mat of special illustrations by Yomu. And Yomu is a very popular social media artist who did a lot of uh, tight focused illustrations. Um, like he's the one who did uh, Go Doki chan. Doki chan. This is a this was a Twitter a Twitter manga, extremely popular Twitter manga. And this is basically what made Yom popular. And like personally, I'm not a huge fan of Yom. I like his style is okay. Like he's not is I'm not a huge fan of his style, but he's extremely popular. And the Gacha game has already done like at least two or three collab events with Yom with some office lady outfits with some various tights and various DNA tights, etc. So it's not surprising that they're doing a collab for the console game for Venus Vacation Prism as well. So in this ultimate limited edition, you will have this uh, desktop mat and you will have a Daki Makura cover with Nanami. So they didn't reveal the design yet, but yeah, so not that like all Daki Makura cover sales, this is just a cover. This isn't the, the, the pillow itself. So you will have to buy the pillow itself if you want to buy a pillow but anyway so there's going to be a dakimakura cover of nanami but they didn't reveal the the design yet so we don't know what what it looks like yet um next this is only for japan uh so yeah so there's a physical all the, the limited editions they're all in physical and in digital as well and then they put in Japan, they they specified that they are going to do shop specific pre order bonuses. So, shop specific pre order bonuses are something that all Japanese games they all do. So, when it, depending on the shop you're going to pre order the game, you will get different merch. So, for example, these are this is a, a, a clear file, this is a poster, and then you have a, a tapestry. So, you have another tapestry like another tapestry tapestry so yeah so depending on where you're pre-ordering the game you will get some different merch and this is something like i think if you're watching this video you already know about these right shop specific pre-order bonuses this is something all japanese games they all do so at least this isn't game game inside in-game content because some games they do special dlcs and in-game content so she's really really scummy but here this is just merch so it's fine so one thing like hardcore otaku what they do uh, 
otaku with a lot of money or hardcore otaku what they do is they pre-order the game at every shop so this way they get all the merch and then they resell the, the extra copies on amazon and on Mer mercari mercari is like a, a japanese amazon etc on yahoo auction etc they resell the extra copies and they keep the merch so some people do that but like this is very rare um yeah so shop specific pre-order bonuses is something like all japanese do all japanese games do and next you also have uh, they also say that the game you have some early copies bonuses so if you buy if you pre-order the game or if you f first print copies first print copies of the game they will have a special dlc with uh, with a china dress for all the characters so in the illustration they are only showing nanami but this dress will be for all the characters and they said you will have to buy like if you're buying the 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 physical version it's only in first print copies of the game and if you buy the digital version you will have to buy the digital version before March uh, 19th. If you buy, if you pre-order and buy the digital version before March 19th, you will get this uh, DLC costumes. But if you buy the game after this point, you won't get the DLC costumes. So this is how, like, this is also something like every Japanese game do: uh, pre-order bonuses and early early copy bonuses. And then, if you pre-order the game digitally you would get this this uh, accessory for the this hair accessory for all the girls this is a uh, pretty cute like flower accessory and the last thing is if you get the game you would get a special outfit in the gacha game and they didn't say they didn't reveal what the outfit looks like yet so this is everything i guess and yeah and lastly the game is uh, is free to upgrade between ps4 and ps5 uh, i think it's, it's best if i show you the english version for this uh so yeah the game those who purchase the playstation 4 physical edition can upgrade to the playstation 5 digital version at no cost in addition the digital version the main game available in the playstation store and the additional digital contents such as such as the digital pre-order bonuses includes the ps4 and ps5 version so yeah if you buy the game digitally you will get it both on ps4 and ps5 and so yeah so by the, by the way the the early purchase bonus is something in the english version as well like this is all the same be it's in japanese or english it's all the same and uh, so yeah and that's everything i think i think i covered everything and so yeah i'm pretty happy nanami is in the game so yeah if we recap like tamaki i really don't like her honoka like she's okay like uh, i already said this in a previous video but uh back when dead or alive 5 released i used to really hate uh, honoka and marirose but now i realize they like dragon ball gt because now that i've seen all the brewing characters in the gacha game i can appreciate honoka and marirose and this is just like dragon ball super when dragon ball super aired i was like uh maybe dragon ball gt wasn't so bad after all so yeah i like Hon honoka nanami is one of my favorites misaki is okay elise is okay and fiona is okay so i'm pretty fine with the stuff with the cast of the game and so yeah regarding dlc in my opinion i don't think they will do dlcs because like i said back when the game was announced on the game show the producer has apologized to those whose favorite won't make it won't make the cut so i assume he meant he meant but that that they won't do dlc characters but we'll see maybe if the game sells well enough uh, we'll see how it goes and the last thing i wanted to talk about is with the release date reveal and with the new trader reveal koei tecmo has done several interviews with japanese outlets so there's one two three four five six seven interviews i found out uh so yeah so they all interviewed uh, the producer of the game sakuda Yasu yasunori yes sakuda p so yeah i haven't had the time to read these interviews yet so what i'm planning to do is i'm gonna try inshallah to read all the interviews and then make a summary article on my blog on my coffee blog so yeah like i don't know how much time this is going to take me because like this is all long interviews right so they published some screenshots as well so this is all long interviews like this is really really long so i'm gonna try to read all the interviews and then 
like make some kind of summary so yeah like nanami she definitely looks different but she still looks cute so i'm okay with the change so i guess that's it that's everything i think i pretty much mentioned everything and and yeah and each interview it's some there's some stuff that's similar but the questions are different because this this wasn't round, round table interviews it was like proper specific separate interviews and um, even if uh, like i always say dengeki dengeki and famitsu they're actually owned by both owned by kadokawa so it's actually the same stuff but even if they're actually owned by the same company they do different interviews so yeah i gotta try to read everything and try to make a, a summary and Kadokawa is the owner of tons of stuff, like they're a huge publisher, they're the owners of tons of light novels, of tons of series, they're the owners of Fumantal Panic, which I was talking about earlier, so yeah. And yeah, I guess that's everything, I guess. I need to read the interviews and make some article, like, summarizing everything because like, uh, these are really really long interviews i don't have the time i don't really have the time right now to 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 do this uh, so yeah so i review some more screenshots and uh, you can see the choice system and like uh, this is really 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 i'm really looking forward to, to the game um i guess like march 6 is pretty soon so i think the game must be pretty much done by now maybe they will try to improve some of the models a little bit more but i think the game should be done by now so yeah uh thanks for watching and see you later remember to like and subscribe and thanks for watching bye